you're able, please stand and join me in the responsive call to worship and the unison prayer. Let us prepare our hearts as we await the coming of our Lord. Let us watch for the one who heard our cries and shouldered the suffering of our world. Let us anticipate the coming of Christ's eternal world with wholeness, reconciliation, and plenty for all. Let us wait in expectation for the day when God's glory is revealed in all its fullness. Let us pray. God, our caring Father, you who gave your beloved Son to ransom all people, see our human fears and love us anyway. Guide us through this season with quiet, glad anticipation. Help us pay attention to the poor and needy and to the lonely among us. Give us a spirit of reflection, patience with each other, and hearts brimming with thanks. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our hymn is number 92, While We Are Waiting, Come. of the session in the congregation of the Wallace Presbyterian Church, I welcome everybody here to the first of our three Advent worship services and luncheons. We're so glad you're here today to take time to worship during this season of Advent. We are particularly pleased to have Hope Guthrie Smith as our uh, speaker today. It's, it's, it's great to me when I go into so many people's houses and see your artwork hanging on the walls. <laughs> Um, what a blessing she is, and I know we'll be blessed by her message, but um, also what a blessing her artwork brings to so many of us in this community, and as the bulletin says, across the country and around the world. So thank you, Hope, for being here. And we're glad to have Arnie Young playing the clarinet along with Vera. You will be blessed by Arnie's music. Thank you, Arnie, for being here. There's a schedule in the bulletin of... Um, other services on the back, our next two services of 14th and 21st, and then Christmas music services and Christmas Eve services during this season. Following worship today, you're invited to stay for lunch in our fellowship hall. You're asked to exit through the door over here by the Chrismon tree and go through the line, get what you'd like to eat, and enjoy the fellowship and have a good time with each other. Again, we're very glad you're here. Bring a friend and a neighbor next week.
so happy to be here um, when they ask me to come to speak I always try to jump at the opportunity if I can because um, God has just done so much for me and in my life and um, so what I say today I hope will point you to him and not me because that's that is um, my testimony is him and um, of course I want you to shop at Art of Hope but <laughs> Duh. But um, above all, I want you to uh, seek him. And one of my scriptures, that's one thing I want to talk about, scripture and what keeps us from God's promises and what helps us fulfill God's promises. Because there's two different paths there. And um, not to go Robert Frost on you, but there is. And I hope you would choose the one that is least traveled, but it's not as hard as we like to make it. Um, you, you know, the scripture that I, you know, focus on, is like I was saying, was to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. That scripture um, is one of the first ones that I began to go, okay, what does this mean? And what do I need to do with it? And if it means something, I want to see it in my life. And there's a lot of scriptures that I began to apply that to. Um, my mom, who's here, Peggy Guthrie, you might know her. Um, she instilled a lot of scripture in us and cute little memorization songs. And I won't, I'll spare you that. <laughs> that was beautiful music, by the way, not my gift. <laughs> um, but I certainly appreciate it. It always moves me. Um, but she would, she would help us memorize these scriptures, and little did I know that they would pop up later in life with the thought of, does that really mean anything? And if so, can it be applied in my life? And, and if I apply it, will it work? And because um, the world has other things to offer you, it has a lot to offer you. And, but it's, and it temporary, it's temporary. It looks like it's gonna work, and it looks appealing, but um, it's, it's temporary. It, it'll work for a while, but God's word is eternal. It's, and, and so you can't go wrong with it, meaning that all things work together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So if you're coming across something and you're not sure everything looks amiss and out of order, apply that scripture to your life and claim it. God's word says all things work together for good to those who are called according to his purpose. And if you've chosen him, you've been called. You've been called according to his purpose. So that's what I started doing um, and probably starting in college. You know, you know, before then, it was kind of dependent on mom and dad <laughs> being under their protection, I felt like. And even though I, I loved the Lord at an early age and tried to do what he, what he called me to do, I really wanted to know how to apply it. And then how to become, um, you know, God says that, that um, we should have an abundant life. Um, not mediocre, not complacent, but abundant life. And I wanted that. I didn't, you know, I didn't know what paths I would be going down as far as career and things like that. 
Um, but I knew that I wanted the best that he had for me. And I wanted to make an eternal difference, I guess is what I'm saying. So in, um, in college, I, there were several situations where I've had to apply it. And, um, and when I did, um, you know, a situation happened to me where it was very scary. Um, and I remember my mom claiming Psalm 91 over us. God sends his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. And I remember thinking, is that true? You know, um, and I was in my apartment in college and saw someone looking in my window and I freaked out as a normal human being would, dropped to the floor and um, didn't really know what to do. But I remember that popping up in my, my brain and then I applied it. I said, you know, God, you said you send angels charge. And I did the common sense things, locked all the doors and windows and called my mama. And, but I had to go back to sleep that night and continue to do so. I had to, you know, keep living and not live in fear. That's one of the things that keeps us from God's promises is fear. And I eliminated fear that night um, by applying that scripture. You know, God sends his angels charge over us. I said, okay, so if that's his word and he says it's truth, then I want to apply it and I want to see it happen in my life. And I've seen it happen over and over and over and over and over again um, where he protects us. You know, a big storm comes and people are freaking out because that's a normal human reaction. That's what the world tells us to do. You know, freak out, you know, go buy a bunch of milk and whatever and for your storm and and freak out that's what everybody tells worry 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 that's another one fear worry um but God says I'm here to protect you he says delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart my desire was to be safe <laughs> so he protected me and little by little bits at a time as I began to apply the scripture in my life I saw things happen, and I kept thinking, well, if he says this simple, you know, I just protection, well, then why can't he do it for other things? So I began to apply, um, you know, the, the delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you desires of your heart. And there's one in Habakkuk 2.2 2 that says, um, write your vision down and make it plain, and he will run with it. And I was like, okay. So... Fast forward, teaching school, teaching art. That, that's what I thought you had to do um, if you wanted to have an art career, especially in this area. 3,500 people, um, not very big. Love you guys, but it's not very many people. <laughs> but um, so I taught for three years and wasn't feeling like it was what I was supposed to be doing. I had no clue what, you know, I just, I just wasn't completely happy. So I sat down one day and I was like, okay, Lord, if you say write your dream and vision down and make it plain and you'll run with it, hmm. And then I've got this delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. He'll make your righteousness shine like the dawn and the justice of your cause like the noonday sun. Write these little things down. And I wrote them on little sticky notes, put them in my pocket. And then I started writing down just, you know, crazy dreams of what I thought maybe I could do. Like, maybe I could have a studio in the back of my house because, you know, got to be safe here. And teach private lessons on the side to kind of, you know, help with the income. And, um, but what if I painted somebody, something, and somebody actually bought it? That would be cool. So I wrote that down. And, you know, um, I wrote down things that were really out of the box for me. Um, I'm not a business person. I'm not, you know, I was very shy kind of growing up and going to school. Um, when I spoke at a, um, at a class in college, I broke out in hives, sweated. Everybody was like, are you okay? I was like, let me finish, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so this is, this is not, you know, normal, but it's, it's applying scripture. Mom told me another scripture that says, um, you're bold and stout-hearted. Sounds kind of rough, but I was really soft-hearted and not bold, so I needed to say that scripture over my life. If you already are, maybe go in the other direction with it. But, <laughs> but I needed to be to be able to say what I needed to say, and I needed to be able to paint and feel confident in it, and I needed to be able to 
um, to feel confident in myself. So I began to say that scripture over myself. So anyway, um, I wrote that vision down, made it plain, and within a year's time, all those things were happening. I'm not saying it was like, poof, here it is. I just took the next step and trusted that God attends his word. He, you know, prayers that avail much. Prayers, um, you know, if you are applying those things and then you take the next step and trust what God says he's going to do, then he'll do it. He will. It happens. The thing that keeps us from it is fear, condemnation, doubt, that voice inside your head. Everybody has one that says you're not worth it. You're not good enough, but you're not bold. And don't, don't you know, worry. Those things were going through my head. They were going through my head every day, but I had to say no. That's not God's word. God's word says this. And many times people say, well, what if that is the truth? It might be fact at the time, but you can change it. You can apply truth. Truth is God's word. And change the fact of that day. So if you're worrying, doubt, and fear, and condemnation, and things going inside your head, but you don't know what I've done, God, you don't know, you know, I, I haven't been a perfect person. Well, that's why he sent the baby. That's why he sent Jesus. He didn't do it because, you know, a few people were sinning. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That is a fact. <laughs> but he came to change it with truth, with God's word. And what he did is he sent Jesus, you know, Christmas time, yay. But then the most important thing happened. He sweat blood in a garden and took on everything that you've done. He took it on himself, and he said, Lord, take this from me if you can. And God was like, Jesus knew because of the joy set before him, he endured the cross so that we could have an abundant life, so we can apply the scripture, and so that we can, he takes the sin, and then we can be who God called us to be. So if you've got that thought inside of your head of you're not worthy, you're not um, good enough, you're not... Or, or even, you know, you don't know what I've done. You don't know my past. That's why Jesus died. That's why he took it on. He bore it all. He went through everything that you go through every day so that he would understand it and so that you could live the life that you were called to live. But you have to know the difference between the truth and the lie. How do you know the difference between a counterfeit and the real deal? The truth. The truth is um, if you know it, okay, let me do it this way. If you have a diamond and you are a jewel connoisseur, you know, most people might be able to go up to two diamonds and say, I don't know the difference. One is a, you know, a piece of glass and one is a diamond. Can you tell the difference? Most people probably wouldn't. But if you know your jewelry, I love jewelry, by the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you know your jewelry, you know that um, what the, the diamond is because you know, the, you know the numbers, the specs, all that stuff. You can go up and say, nope, that's the real deal. Same with your life. If you know God's word, the truth, the real deal, if you know it in your heart, you know it's good to know it in your mind, but when it sinks down into your spirit and you apply it to life, and then you know the truth, then you'll be able to identify the lie like that. You will. It's the truth. No pun intended. But it is. It is the truth. So if you um, are going through life and you, you realize that, um, okay, you wake up one morning and something comes along and um, an opportunity. And you're like, Lord, should I do it? And, and doors are opening up. Read God's word. Delight yourself in him. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Read it. Apply it. Apply it. Apply it. And then you'll begin to take that path that's less traveled, I've, I've seen, and, and things start to happen in your life. I want to finish part of my the Art of Hope testimony here and just so, because I want you to know it works. Um, so God fulfilled all those things within a year, and then within four years' time, I had a storefront. I began to keep writing things down, making it plain, making the vision, you know, plain to him and to myself. And then I began to, if I couldn't figure something out, if I had so much confusion, because 
the world comes on you quick. It does. And if I had confusion, I would have to get quiet, find scripture, ask God, show me something that I can apply to this. One day it was so heavy on me. I, I just was like, I feel so confused. I feel so much doubt and fear, and I need to take care of it. And I just got in a room, and honestly, the only thing I could say was Jesus' name over and over and over again. And when I focused on him, I focused on him, focused on him until it lifted. And it lifted, and God began to do even more more things in my life after that. Um, so, so I had this first storefront, and then began to get, you know, orders all over the world and all that, and it's, it's God just keeps blowing my mind. We have a website now, and now we have our second store in, um, in Clinton. And I just sit back and go, oh, my gosh. I, I don't understand. Because people will even ask you now, how is this working? Because if you were to write that on paper, not a dream like I did, but if you were to write it in a business plan, 99% of the people would say, no, negative. No, that's not going to work. Um, you know, you don't have enough population. I actually had a professor tell me one time, you would be really good at maybe having your own studio, but you can't do it anywhere in North Carolina. You'd have to go to New York. You'd need to go to um, Florida. There's some art communities in Florida. You know, are you willing to move? So no, I guess I'm going to have to teach it, you know. And so if you were to write it out, it doesn't make sense. But that's how God works. He doesn't want it to make sense. So if it doesn't make sense to you, then it's probably God, <laughs> and it probably needs to happen. So um, the, the other thing that keeps us from God's promises, you know, we have fear, doubt, is that condemnation. And we, I just talked about it, what Jesus came to, to save us from. But, you know, the enemy wants to keep you from your promise. And condemnation, I have seen, is probably the root of even fear and doubt and all that. Condemnation is guilt, and everybody deals with it, and it's not fun at all. But I pulled this up because I really wanted to read it. This is y'all's little Bible here. If you want to know where in the world do I start, I mean, I'm sure you guys read your scripture and, and know scripture, but if you want to know, if you want somewhere to start with how do I start reading something and applying it. Go to Romans 6, 7, and 8. Um, it deals with all those things I'm talking about, especially condemnation. Romans 8 says, There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You could read that the rest of your day over and over. Every time something comes in your mind, say, Oh, there's therefore no condemnation in Christ Jesus. And your day will probably change today. Just that one sentence. And there's a lot in here. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sin and flesh and to deal with sin. So therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So when you go and you start to feel guilt, condemnation, that the enemy starts to put in your mind, say, nope, there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. And if you start to apply that, you will see things change in your life. So I wanted to address those things. Now, there's 365 scriptures addressing fear. So pretty much just open any page and you can probably find something. And worry is, you know, do not worry about tomorrow. If tomorrow will worry about itself. Worry, we almost feel like in America it's our duty. It's not. It's a sin. God took care of it on the cross, and there is no condemnation. But it's not your duty to worry. That's not, you're not a good person. Or, you know, the enemy will make you think, well, you're not a good person if you're not worrying because you're, that's your duty as a mother about your children or about life in general. No. That's not, because it'll, it'll dictate your, dictate your decision-making. If I had let worry run my life, I wouldn't be where I'm at. Do you think I'm not worried sometimes that things aren't going to add up in the books? You know, my husband does the books, so I'm always like, oh. So I have to apply that often. I have to really, you know, say, Lord, you said that delight yourself in the Lord, give you the desires of your heart, and this is my desire, to spread your word through my scripture like all over the world, and it's happening. So things have to add up here, you know, <laughs> show up, and he does. And then I say, I'm not going to worry about it. I push it aside. 
I'm not going to worry about it. And um, even with my children, again, the Psalm 91, not worrying. And I'm going to stop here. I know I'm talking a little long, but I can't help it. I love Jesus. I love what he has. And it is the truth. And it is God's, you know, promise is to us. And I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to miss it. But, you know, my children, that's probably one of the biggest worry problems in, in our world. I see people worry, worry, worry over your children, over your family. Give it to God. Give it to God and don't take it on. And if you do it, the sooner you do it, the better. If you let it linger for a few days, it's harder. And, and a lot of times it turns into disease. I told my kids that the other day because they were, you know, worrying about something. I said, you got to stop. You got to stop with the worry. It causes diseases. And it does. It does. And um, so worry, condemnation, and fear Find scriptures to apply to that and realize there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Um, Go to your word. Read Romans 8, 6, 7, and 8 and um, find something that majorly speaks to you. Write it on a sticky note. Stick it in your pocket. And when that jerk inside your head, I can say that because we all know what I'm talking about, says, you know, you look horrible today. Oh, my gosh, why are you even trying? You can say, I'm made in the image of Christ, and I'm good. Everything's good. And, and then act in that truth so that you can recognize that counterfeit. The truth is there so you can recognize that counterfeit. So those voices, that jerk in your head, you can tell it to hush. Say hush and, and go on with, with what God has for you. So thank you so much for having me today. I appreciate it. Um, I hope that made sense and I hope that um, you will read his word apply it to your life and reign reign in life and know who he is seek him first seeking him first and his righteousness seeking his his face that is your purpose you know your number one purpose is him if you make him it first everything else will take care of itself and I promise you that I promise you, test a minute. Try it. Do it in your finances, your family, your business, your home. Do it. That's my business plan right there. That's it. Somebody asked me if I'd ever written a business plan. I was like, no. And most business people would cringe at the thought of that. But I'm like, it's kind of been written right here. And I'm almost glad I didn't go to business school because then I probably would have applied that. I'm a little rule follower, you know. So, you know, I'm glad he didn't, you know, I'm glad I didn't go to business school. He kept me from it. Because I have applied God's word, scripture, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all things will be added unto you. That's it. I promise. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Hope. Um, if you'd stand, uh, we'll have a blessing for the meal. And then you're invited to go through this door and enjoy a good meal. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for blessing us through Arnie's music and hope's words. Help us to take them to heart during this Advent season. We thank you for the blessing of a good meal on this cold, rainy day. And we thank you for the warmth of the fellowship around the table. Lord, we thank you for sending your son to be our savior. And we pray that you would give us eager and watchful hearts as we await his coming again. We ask this all in his name. Amen. Thank you.